Hello, Captains. Welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, USS Endeavor. And today we have a bit of a unique video, one that I wasn't planning on making, but I felt that I needed to... I wanted to give my opinion. I know nobody asked for it, and I've never done a video like this before, and I don't plan on making many of those in the future. However, I feel like one of my favorite community contributors, one of my favorite YouTube channels um, from this game came out with what I felt is a pretty interesting take on why he decided to leave World of Warships Legends. And first and foremost, I just wanted to say right off the bat that I actually have a I have a very strong respect for Hipper. I was one of the first people to subscribe to his channel when he um, came on the scene several years ago. And he is by far the single greatest... Uh, reason for why I am a cruiser main and not a battleship main or a destroyer main be, be a lot because of his ideas and concepts for cruiser play. He really kind of shifted the and the paradigm on how you play cruisers. And of course, everybody at this point knows what he's known for or at least was when he was active playing this game. He was the agile player. He was the one that if it could become agile, he did it. And <laughs> if it couldn't become agile, he did it anyway and kind of gave his opinion on it. But a lot of people couldn't get on board with his play style. But for me, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I really liked the concepts in which he brought forth. And he was the only YouTuber that I ever financially supported while he was an active YouTuber for this when he made content for Legends. I say all that to say this. I'm a ma I was a massive fan of Hipper and I learned a great deal from him. However, that all being said, I don't entirely agree with everything that he said. And although it's his opinion, and I'm not trying to take away anything that he said, if those are truly his reasons for leaving and quitting Legends, I'm absolutely okay with that. They're his decisions. Nobody's forcing him to play the game. I know that there are a lot of fans like myself that were disappointed that he no longer produces content for the game because like I mentioned just now I really enjoyed what he did but I just couldn't get on board with the reasons why as a whole it felt like when he was making these five reasons I'm sure there are many more but he pointed out these five and for the purposes of this video we're going to talk about these things that he talked about and I don't agree with a lot of what he said and it's no it's nothing against him I I want it to be known right off the bat I'm not attacking Hipper as a person I I like the guy I have nothing against him personally but the takes and his position on the game I don't agree with and I think uh, as a mature person we can have these types of discussions and attack the issues or the arguments and not necessarily the person who made them. So that is where I stand. And not everybody's going to agree with what I have to say. So, and that's what makes it great. We can have these types of discussions if you want to have them. But these are my opinions on why I believe that although this is what Hipper said regarding to himself, he kind of put it out there as if this is a reason why you shouldn't play the game. And does it involve everybody? Well, only you can make that determination. He laid out his opinion. I'm going to lay out mine. I'm going to have arguments to what he said. And we're going to go from there. So 
Those are the five reasons that are listed right there, and we're going to go over them one by one. All right, Captains. Um, I'm going to have some gameplay in the background, but that's just it. I'm not going to be really commenting on that. So, Hipper's first point. Bad players. Now, nobody can control the players that you're with unless you're in a division in which you can control them. But having gotten a unique insight on how Wargaming has set up the game, yes, you're going to have bad players. And this is not skill-based matchmaking. And there is never going to be skill-based matchmaking in this game. There are only a couple of things that the game takes into account when it puts players together. One is the tier in which you select. Two is whether you're in a division or not. And lastly is the ship type. Destroyer, cruiser, battleship. That's it. It doesn't look into the player's history how many games they've played, what their win rate is. It doesn't it doesn't take any of that into account and they are not planning on ever making that a thing. And I get that there are bad players in the game and Hipper alludes to the fact that the reason why is not the player's fault per se as an individual, but it's a fault of wargaming for not introducing things within the game that help the new player understand how the game is played. And I can relate to that a little bit because in the early parts of the game, because I've been playing for just as long as he has, um, going on five years, that there are no real tutorials. However, that's what YouTube creators are for. That's why I started a channel. Now, I'm not the first one to have started it, but there are many channels out there. If you want to know how to get better at a game, we live in an age now where technology and things like YouTube, in which you're watching this on right now, gives you a platform and a way to understand on how to do practically anything. Take away World of Warships for a minute and just go... Just Google anything, and there's probably a video on it. So, now, does that mean... That puts the onus back on the person. And there are myriads of videos out there. How-to guides, beginner guides, from various YouTube content creators, including Hipper himself, who have put out guides on how to do certain things with certain ships and, how, and the basic mechanics of the game. And those players are always going to be there. And there's nothing anybody can do. You're going to have players that are good. You're going to have players that are bad. And it's completely random because of the way that Wargaming set it up as to whether or not you're going to get a good team or a bad team. And there's really not anything that anybody can do about it. And it sucks because there are those games that are mainly Steam rolls, and then there are games where they're competitive. And... There's just not a whole lot anybody's going to be able to do about it. And Wargaming has come out to say that they're not going to try to fix that because there's just nothing in development that's going to improve that or change that. So my advice is to learn the mechanics of the game, utilize those channels that have content, and try to better yourself and understand that everybody's going to go through it. Nobody's immune. The next point that Hipper made was that there's too much of an emphasis on damage and not on other things, largely like rudder shift or better speed or defensive perks, which, and a lot of the Azur Lane commanders that have come out recently do have a lot of focus on improving damage overall. And so I would agree that there have been a lot of new additions to the game that do heavily rely on damage. However, that being said, he boasted for pretty much his entire YouTube career on this game that learn how to dodge 
and you negate a lot of the damage that's ever done to you because if you know how to turn and shift and angle appropriately, you can negate most if not all that damage and render salvos that people shoot at you useless, meaning that the damage perks that he's complaining about don't exactly matter if they can't hit the target because of his quote-unquote good ability to dodge. So in a way, it's kind of a a shot back to his own argument that he made almost the entire time that he was playing the game and that if you can't get hit, then you can have all the damage perks you want. Now, I will say that I would like to see more vers- uh, variety when it comes to the different perks that you can have. If it's always only damage, then, well, then you just have to understand how to dodge and position better so that you don't get hit. I firmly believe and am a stickler that if you misposition or you don't angle correctly, I feel you should be punished. And so for these damage-focused builds... I don't have a problem with them. If I misposition and I put myself in a place where I shouldn't be, I feel that I should be taken out of the game because I feel that mistakes should be punished. But Hipper doesn't feel that way, apparently. And I may be one of the few that is going to say something like that, but the best way to learn in this game is by making mistakes. I've made plenty of them. I'm going to make a whole lot more. I'm not immune to making mistakes. But to try to give yourself an advantage to where if you get hit, you're never going to receive a whole lot of damage against you, is kind of silly. This is a warships game after all, in which these shells are supposed to do massive damage when they hit you. And I get it's a video game. And that's why they introduced angling and armor and things like that to the game to help negate salvos if you have the right armor and the right ship. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't think it's too silly to have damage-focused commanders in the game. Now, Hipper's third point is what he calls silly ships. And the way that he described it is that there are some ships in the game that were introduced that are just way too powerful. Ships that could carry an entire lobby, according to what he's basically saying, and almost alluding to the fact that there's nothing anybody can do about these ships. If they're in the game, it's almost a foregone conclusion that you're going to lose. Because if you're going up against these ships, they're too powerful, they have too much going for them, and that there is no, basically... There's no scissors to the paper or rock or anything like that that can counter these specific ships, which I think is a load of hogwash, if you ask me. Clearly, there are ships in the game that do have really good mechanics to them. He alludes to the Wooster at Legendary Tier and the Des Moines, which do have very good guns and have great characteristics about them. There, the Wooster being able to basically have an incredible DPM from a long range away, and there's nothing you can do about it. It has radar for a cruiser with which can take care of destroyers, which in my mind we need at Legendary Tier to help be the counter to destroyer players. But the Wooster is not invincible. It does have a 32 millimeter bow in which he's talking about, but the side of it is not 32 millimeters and it can get overmatched by other ships like the Yamato or the Musashi at that tier that can absolutely devastate a Wooster. It just depends on the type of player who's playing the ship. I personally believe that a well-experienced veteran player will make a ship better And that just because you're in a really good ship, if you're not experienced in that ship, I've seen some pretty silly people playing this game that are in quote-unquote overpowered ships that play really dumb. And they get taken out relatively quickly 
And then they're like, but I'm in a really good ship. Why didn't I do well? Well, it's because you played it incorrectly. So I personally believe that it's the person that's controlling the ship a lot more than the ship itself. Now, there is merit to certain ships that go up against others that some are just going to have a hard time taking out certain ships because they're not designed to. That's why it's a team-based game, and that's why there are hard counters to other ships in the game. And yes, there are some that do well overall, but I don't believe that there are quote-unquote ships so powerful that they can carry an entire lobby and that nothing you can do is going to change the course of that. I think that's just a silly take. Now, Hipper's fourth point is the Bureau. He has a lot of ships that he's not researching, and whether, I mean, there is a love-hate relationship with the Bureau. Early on, anybody could research those ships regardless of your experience level and given time as long as you logged in every day eventually you could get the most powerful ship of that line at legendary tier which i will argue is not a good mechanic however here recently wargaming has changed the way that they introduce legendary ships by making certain segments a requirement to have the tech tree equivalent in order to progress further through the Bureau. You need the Tier 6, the Tier 7, and the Tier 8 tech tree ship in order to get the legendary ship of that line. And Wargaming did a great job and listened to the community and brought about that change that I feel will make it better. Is it a perfect system? No. I think we all can agree that all of the ideas that Wargaming has ever had with this game are not all going to be perfect. But I also don't think it's 100% flawed either. Now, I wouldn't have done it that way, but it's a little too late at this point to change it. And as much as the grind is sucks... It is a pretty ingenious tactic if you think about it from Wargaming's perspective. It is a great way to keep their player base involved on a daily basis. You have to log in at least once every 24 hours to keep that Bureau project going. And I'm, I'm no genius, but that is a good tactic, whether you like it or not, to keep you involved if you really want that ship. So I don't I'm not the biggest fan of the bureau, but I don't think that it is a mechanic that is completely breaking the game. I think that it's just something that you have another thing that you have to grind. And if you enjoy the grind, which is 99% of this game, then it's not something that's going to keep you from enjoying overall the full process of this game. And again, it's a little too late to introduce something new. So it's just something that we have to embrace. But I still enjoy the game. And the Bureau is not something that's going to keep me from shutting the game off and never coming back to it ever again. Now, his last point is that there is no diversity. Now, I'm going to kind of go a different route on this than he did. But there are now over 500 ships in the game total from tech tree and premium alike. I don't have them all, but I've got over 420 of them. That's quite a bit of diversity there. Two, we have a myriad of different types of commanders that are all over the place and more that are being introduced. I mean, we're just, we just got five new ones in the Azur Lane, which um, are constantly coming in. So... Now, the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head where there is little diversity, I've actually seen a little bit of change in this lately, and that is the type of game modes. There are not many different types of game modes to play. You have AI, Standard, Ranked when it comes out, Arena when it comes out. You do have Training Rooms now, which is a good 
intro that has long been overdue. And they also introduced fleet battles, which they've only had one run of, but better than nothing. There needs I feel like there needs to be a little bit more as far as the way you play the game. But overall, I feel like there's a lot of diversity in this game. Like I said, there's a lot of different ship types. There's a lot of different ships in and of themselves. There's a lot of different commanders. There are so many different ways that you can build these ships. Some are stronger than others. But to say that there's absolutely no diversity in this game... I know that's kind of a blanket blanket statement and that he's talking about other aspects of it, but there is plenty of diversity in this game, minus a couple of game modes that you can't enjoy here and there. So anyway, that's my opinion. It is just that, my opinion. Everybody is entitled to it. Hipper is entitled to his if he's never going to come back, that's purely his choice. I wish him the best in whatever it is that he does. Uh, I do miss him. I know a lot of people do. And I guarantee you this video is not going to entice him to come back. He's already made up his mind. But if he ever did, I would love that because he was a great community contributor when he was in his prime. So anyway, Captains, uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, if you have any of your own, I would love to hear from you. Um, everybody's entitled to it, and I would love to hear what you have to say on the matter. But anyway, that's going to do it for me today. I do hope to see you out there. I'm going to continue bringing content as we uh, keep going on. There's a lot of exciting stuff that's coming in. So until next time, this is the USS Endeavor signing off.